Ferrari said they'd never make an SUV. And if you ask them today, they still haven't made one. So what I'm about to show you is Marinello's first ever four-door, four-seater sports car that can be used to drop off the kids at school during the week and take to the snow on the weekends. But whatever you do, don't let them hear you call it an SUV. So this here is the Ferrari Pura Sangue, which translates in English to thoroughbred. Now, I am in Sydney at a media event at Universo Ferrari, so sorry if there's any noise or people walking around, but we'll push on. And it is obviously here on display. So this is a pre-production car, so we won't be going for a drive today, but I will walk you through this car so we can see it in a bit more detail. In the meantime, make sure you give this a like, subscribe and click that bell notification so you get notified when videos like this one go live. Let's check it out. Let's start at a very important part of this and every Ferrari, the heart if you will. All of those anti-internal combustion engine people out there, cubby ears, I'm sorry to say, but I'm so happy that Ferrari stuck to their roots because this right here is a 6.5 litre naturally aspirated V12 engine. Now it is the only naturally aspirated V12 SUV in the world. It's capable of 533 kilowatts and 716 newton meters. Impressive times, zero to 103.3 seconds claimed, top speed of 310 kilometers. Now there is an automatic dual clutch transmission, but that's actually at the rear to help with weight distribution. Also it's all wheel drive and that system was adopted from the GT4C Lusso. So fair to say that this Ferrari is fast. This project was certainly ambitious. Compared to a modern GT, the layout and proportions are completely different. For example, an average GT engine is found at the front of the car, mated directly to the gearbox. As mentioned, the gearbox in the Pura Sangue sits in the rear and the engine is mid-front mounted, creating a sporty transaxle layout. Making its debut is something Ferrari calls fast, better known as Ferrari Active Suspension Technology. What does it do exactly? Basically, it works to control body roll into corners, optimising tyre contact with the road as the vehicle drives over rough surfaces. Really, no matter the surface, it should continue to perform and handle like a sports car. What else? Well, it's packed with that smart ABS system from the 296, it's got side slip control, independent rear wheel steering, and of course, the chassis is brand spanking new, lighter than Ferrari's previous four seaters, even though it's larger. The body shell is built from a range of lightweight materials, including carbon fiber, aluminum, and a high strength steel. The Ferrari Puta Sangue measures in at 4,973 millimeters long, 2,028 millimeters wide, and 1,589 millimetres tall. It sits on a wheelbase of 3,018 millimetres. But what does that actually look like in the real world? Now, when I saw it in photos, it looked quite small. I was really wanting to see it in person. And as you can see, I feel quite tall next to it. So it is not a huge SUV. To give you an idea in context, the Urus is actually longer and taller, but the Pura Sangue is wider and has a larger wheelbase. Now looking at the exterior, let us know what you think of the look. Make sure you comment down below. This one here is finished in Nero, which means black, but if you can see in the sun, it actually looks like it has quite a dark brown tinge to it. 22 inch on the front, 23 inch on the rear. And the best part, and probably the most impressive and surprising is what Ferrari calls welcome doors. So let's go inside. Behind the wheel, it obviously feels really plush and premium in here. This color inside, it's basically black on black. It's called Testa di Mordo. There's lots of carbon fiber throughout. And in the Pura Sangue, that carbon fiber has a really beautiful copper shine to it as well. Now there are some changes from the SF90, the Roma, but there are some things that have been carried on as well. And one of those things is this haptic system, which I'm sure you've seen before. It's not the easiest to use on the moon 
move, but they have actually listened. So there are some indentations in between some of the buttons that you need to push and some of the functions to make it easier on the go and you're not accidentally clicking voice control. This over here is new, it's a 10 inch touch screen and like you've been able to do before in a Ferrari, if you're the passenger, you can be involved so you can see the speed and all the information here, but you really have your own infotainment system sitting in front of you that you can control all the functions. One thing they have rejected is that big screen in the middle here. That is where the climate control was buried. Instead now, they have this push out rotary dial and you can control climate that way. So thank you Ferrari. In the way of storage, you've got plenty up front, so your cup holders in here, little spot there for bits and pieces and a wireless phone charger up the front. Plus, they're not huge, but you do get some decent sized door bins as well. Things like your panoramic sunroof and your wireless charge pad as usual are optional extras. Put a Sunwear buyers for the first time in a Ferrari have the option to personalise their roof. As you can see, this one is glass, but it's a little more fancy than that. It's actually a full-length electrochromatic glass roof, coated on its lower surface with an electro-sensitive film, meaning it can either provide shade or sunlight to the cabin. If that doesn't tickle your fancy, then you can opt for a carbon roof as standard. But the options are endless, being a Ferrari, like the long list of colours to choose from, including classic, historical and special and that's even before you get into the tailor-made program. So overall, it feels pretty comfortable to be behind the wheel here. And if you're driving this car with the V12, I wanna be sitting right here. But for the first time in a Ferrari, I'm actually gonna to say to you, let's check out the rear. Note that the Porta Sangue is exclusively available as a four-seater. So no, you can't option it as a five-seater like you can with some other SUVs. For the first time, I'm in the back of the Ferrari and have a look at that. Look at that leg room. That is pretty decent. Headroom not too bad either. Toe room is good. Now, it is pretty plush back here, but it's not Cullinan-esque, like you don't get any of those big screens and you're not gonna be sitting here drinking your Moe because there's no cooler or anything like that. But you do get things like your rotary dial here, so you can also control things from the back and these seats are incredibly comfy as well. Spot for your phone goes in here, cup holders, extra room in the doors, again, not huge. Get a seat back pocket here. All in all, I still just can't believe that I'm in the back of a Ferrari and I have ample room. So after standing next to it and sitting in it, I guess I can kind of understand Ferrari why you don't want it referred to as an SUV. As I said, it's so much smaller than I was expecting and really it looks more like a jacked up GTC for Lusso, but I'll let you make up your own mind. Whatever you decide, it has quite a presence and while it might remind you of other GT Ferraris like the Roma and Portofino, it still retains its own quirks. I have to make mention of the aerodynamic elements implemented too, found on the wheel arch trims, front and rear, the front aero bridge, similar to that of the F12 Berlinetta, and perhaps the most fascinating is in the rear. Notice there are no wipers, and that's because air is channeled instead to clean the rear windscreen. Now that's smart. The boot isn't huge, but still pretty decent at 473 litres. Now before we get to the price, let me remind you of some others it's up against. The Aston Martin DBX starts at just over $356,000. Lamborghini Urus kicks off at around $395,000, while the Bentley Bentayga is priced from around $378,000, and you can start thinking about a Rolls-Royce Cullinan at around $692,000. These all exclude on-road costs. So Ferrari's first ever SUV. Now they've already told us that this car is so popular that they've already closed off orders in Australia and around the world. And most of those orders were filled by existing Ferrari customers. So if you are wanting this car, you could be waiting quite some time. It'll give you plenty of time to save up because price tag $728,000 plus on-road costs. That's almost double as much as a Lamborghini Urus. It's expensive. What do you think? Would you pay that much for this car? And do you like it? Let us know in the comments below. Also like, subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified when videos like this one get live and for everything Ferrari and Ferrari Puta Sangue, head on over to drive.com.au. Thanks for watching.